In this lesson, we do some work on angles. An angle is a measure of the turn between two arms. So let's consider two arms there, a red one and a green one. Let's put the red one on top of that green one and start turning it. Now, the amount of turn there is known as the angle. This is an arm, and this is an arm. So two arms there create the angle. This is known as the corner, sometimes referred to as the vertex. So you'll need to know both terms, corner and vertex. Now, if we consider this angle here, and I'll reproduce it, but I seem to enlarge the angle. In fact, the angles are the same size, because the amount of turn between the arms is the same in each. So the arms got bigger, but the amount of turn is the same in each. So that's the angle. Let's look at an example. We're asked to order the angles from smallest to largest. So we've got angle A there, angle B, angle C, and angle D. So our answer, we're going from smallest to largest. Now having a look at the angles there, the amount of turn between each of the arms, which do you think is the smallest? Well, it's angle B. The next smallest will be angle A. And then out of C and D, which one's smaller? Well, angle D is smaller than angle C. Angle C is the largest. Now, generally, you can do the angles by sight. There's another way of, of measuring angles or comparing angles. We can use, we could use two paddle pop sticks, put them together, put a pin there, and then we could turn them. So let's see what we could do. We could turn that there, and let's measure angle B. All right, that's the size angle B. And let's compare that angle B with angle A. So we'd bring it across. And we could see that angle B certainly is smaller than angle A. Another way of doing it, and this is what you're going to practice in your questions. Let's say angle D, we wanted to compare that with angle C. We could move angle D across and turn it around, and you can see that it's actually within angle C. So angle D must be smaller than angle C.